Hey, it's Alabama Annie. With another episode of Stories and Songs for you. It's not going to be a scary one today. It's not going to be uh, anything that you don't want to watch alone. <laughs> or in the middle of the night. Uh, this is a story about lost things and things that return. Now, I'm sitting out here on this beautiful afternoon um, near the old garden site, which has been the garden here ever since I can remember. And in the garden, you know, my brother turns it with the tractor, and he and his wife Mary plant it, and then we all pick it and enjoy the vegetables. Um, but the, the garden site is almost a treasure trove because after he turns it or after a heavy rain I can walk out into that garden plot and pick up things like this which I consider little gifts when I find them it's just like I was talking to a friend online the other day about arrowheads finding arrowheads out on walks and uh, I don't dig for them I don't dig for artifacts at all except in the garden <laughs> because I know they belong to my relatives but here, for instance, is a is part of an old clay jug, and I'm sure that the pottery was made locally and glazed with a natural glaze of some type. Beautiful pieces, and I have boxes and boxes of this, trying to figure out what kind of art to do with them. And I'll come up with something eventually. But that's one thing I found out there, and just a few example of thousands, but and here is a piece of beautiful, beautiful blue glass. Very thick, curved, part of an old, I'm thinking a, a big gallon fruit jar, perhaps. One of the ones with the ceramic lid on it. And so, found a lot of pieces of gorgeous glass like this. And then here's a piece of just common pottery that, that all of this was used, I'm sure, inside the old house or in, uh, in, the, in the building that used to be where the garage was that they called the summer rooms. And it's where they cooked in the summertime or when they were canning and so forth. So, and I'll tell you a story about the house and then I'll read you the story in question. Upstairs in this old house, the... Uh, that portion of the house was built around 1880 something. It was added on to and added on to. This house is the product of many other old houses and, and you can tell they reclaimed and recycled the lumber in it. Um, but in the upstairs, after my mother died, all of the rooms were just like they had been forever. Uh, I'm sure in, since the 1920s. Uh, there were trunks lining the walls and furniture and objects and boxes of keepsakes and cedar chests and uh, just anything you can think of was up there. Well, after my mother passed away and I uh, inherited the house, I started cleaning upstairs. And the first thing I did, I picked out one room in particular. And I uh, went up with all my cleaning supplies and I opened the windows and turned the fan on. Because it was very, it's, it was very dusty up there, and so then I started ripping off the old wallpaper. The wallpaper was dated probably from 1915 to 1920 something. Beautiful wallpaper, but it was just coming off in pieces. It was so brittle, and so I got all of that off, and I exposed the beautiful wooden walls up there. Each, you know, many of the boards were painted different colors. And I thought that was cool, so I didn't do a thing to it. And when I was cleaning the room and I had the windows open, it was mid-afternoon and the sun was shining through the windows. And I turned around to grab something and I noticed a glint in the corner of the room, like a little sparkle in the sunlight. And I went over to take a look. And in between the boards, it wedged in between in a crack. In the very corner was a beautiful little golden wedding band. And so I got a screwdriver and I, I went in behind the ring and pried it out. 
and looked at it. It had no inscription, just a plain gold band. But it had to have been placed in that corner before the wallpaper went up. So heaven only knows who it belonged to or why it was in the corner between two boards. At any rate, um, that that was a monumental occasion for me. I was like, this is so well. So, so then we started looking everywhere, you know, crawling around in the attic and so forth. I found a few cool things, but we never did find the old pistol that's supposed to be stashed here or some other objects. <laughs> still looking. But this is a story I found when I lived in Memphis and was playing my house gigs on Bill Street. And I went into a thrift store and found a stack of old newspapers from anywhere. Some of them were from the 1950s and some went, it, went a, up to like, I think, 1969. And this particular one I started looking at when I got home had a, an interesting article in it, in the community section. People had submitted stories to the newspaper, and this is one of them. It's, I entitled the story I wrote based on that article, A Treasure Who Returned. Marilyn Kane moved to Tennessee from Arkansas just after she met and married her husband, Buddy, upon his return from Vietnam. They settled down on his family farm to raise cattle and corn, and their wedding had been a lovely affair, and she had made a beautiful bride, and to Marilyn, the wedding had been almost perfect, except for one thing. When Marilyn was a little girl, her grandmother had promised that she would have her wedding band on the day she was married. And Marilyn always looked forward to that, and she would let her hold the ring, and she read the inscription on the inside of it that said, To my darling on our wedding day. But, sadly, her grandmother passed away before Marilyn was married. And, as things do sometimes, several valued objects that her grandmother had kept all those years disappeared. No one knows who took them. And so, Marilyn did not have the opportunity to marry with her grandmother's wedding band on her finger. But several years after their wedding, once they were settled in on that farm, a horrible storm blew across the hills. The dark rolling clouds and thunder and lightning and the wind got up and soon Buddy and Marilyn had to leave the house for a shelter that they called the storm cellar. They raced out the back door of the house to the cellar just in time and went down the steps and closed the door as the winds tore across the farm. When the storm was over and they stepped out to view the damage, Marilyn climbed the steps behind Buddy into bright sunlight. And to their relief, they saw their house was still there, a little worse for wear, but still there just the same. And the barn as well, and they all the cattle were accounted for. And things were not in terribly bad shape, so they were very grateful. But the ground on the farm looked as though it had been plowed, and there was debris everywhere. There were pieces of roofing. There were objects like a boy's baseball cap hanging from a limb in a tree, and a pieces of photographs, and then uh, a broken teacup that Marilyn spied that was not hers and had not been there before. And then she happened to look past the teacup and notice something shimmering and glinting in that bright sunlight. And she went over and kicked it with her foot. And when she kicked it with her foot, she went, it's a wedding band. She bent over to pick it up and held it up to the sunlight, looking carefully at it. And on the inside, she saw that inscription to my darling on our wedding day. Well, she ran across the yard and showed it to Buddy, and Buddy couldn't believe it either. How on earth did her grandmother's wedding band that had disappeared years before return to them on their farm in another state? At any rate, Buddy put the ring on her finger, and then, as if to signify that her grandmother was watching, a rainbow appeared. 
And it was as if she was saying, I promised you this wedding band. And the treasure returned. Now, I have an old song from the 1920s I'd like to conclude this episode with. It's called, I Found a Dream. I found a dream. And it really came true. enjoyed this episode get out there and look for some treasure and enjoy the day at any rate till next time it's alabama annie see you then i'm gonna go find some more stuff <laughs>